So this is the story of how I became a data scientist in 2024. Hi, I'm Ranesh and I'm currently a data scientist working at a tech startup. The short version of this story is that I came to the US in the spring of 2022 to complete my undergraduate degree. I started looking for my first corporate internship at the end of the year and I eventually got eight offers in three months. I ultimately decided to go with the tech startup from all those offers and two months in, I got a full-time offer to become a data analyst working there while I complete my degree. And then not too long after, I got a promotion to become a data scientist. Now for the longer version of this story, uh, it starts off around 2022 when I came to the US to complete my degree in computer science at the University of Toledo. After registering for classes that spring, I found out that my initial goal of graduating by December of 2023 was just not feasible with that degree. There was a couple of logistical restrictions within the engineering department that just prevented me from graduating uh, within my goal time frame. Essentially, they required me to get three full internships before I graduated within the US and due to my immigration status at the time, I was an F1 student, I just wasn't able to do that in that two years. So after a few stressful nights, I managed to come up with a new plan of study, which would ultimately allow me to graduate in December of 2023 with a data science degree. With this new plan of study, I had to take on average about 19 credits a semester with some space for me to get a related internship in data science before I graduate. Anyway, after my first semester, I quickly came to the realization that just taking school courses and classes is not going to be enough to help me land a job or even an internship. So with that in mind, I decided to take a couple certifications like the Google Data Analytics certification on course Sierra and also IBM's data science certification, which allowed me to get a better understanding of the industry. So with that new confidence, I started applying for internships at around December 2022, right after finals, and I quickly found that I wasn't really getting any traction. My resume was kind of meh, it didn't really have a format, it was very blank and not really readable or legible, and I got a lot of rejections without any phone screens or any interviews, so I realized the problem was probably within my resume. So because of all that, I started building my portfolio with a couple of free resources online like GitHub Pages and also HTML5 templates, which ultimately helped me boost my confidence and display my work in a better format. And around this time, I also found out about the ATS system. So I tried to boost my resume using a better format, a better template that just allowed my resume to be more legible and readable from a perspective of an ATS scan. I noticed that previously I wasn't really able to get any interviews because I didn't really have anything to show for myself on my resume. I also added more experience to my resume by becoming a teaching assistant, unpaid of course, uh, for a couple classes where I had a good relationship with the professor and my grades weren't too bad. Now all of that combined helped me get a few more interviews after Christmas break in the months of January and February. Uh, which ultimately boosted my confidence and allowed me to take on an unpaid internship to help me add more experience too. Now, all of this obviously helped my search a lot. Uh, I got some mentorship experience from that TA job. I also had some internship experience from that unpaid internship, which obviously validates my skill set to an employer. At this time, I also started networking with a couple of peers, a couple of classmates to get more referrals and also get more interviews. And as you can imagine, at this point, I was doing a lot of interview prep, mock interviews, behavioral questions, technical questions and stuff like that and shortly after I got eight offers in the span of about a month. After narrowing it down to about three companies, I decided to take about a week to compare these offers and discuss with my wife on what company and what offer would be the best case for us in the short term and also the long term. My goal at this point was not just to secure a summer internship, but I was also looking at long-term opportunities, maybe a full-time offer after I graduate, or maybe a return offer in the fall to work part-time while I finish my degree. And after a couple of discussions with my wife and also uh, analyzing the differences between these offers on Excel sheets, we ultimately ended up on the startup. At the time, choosing the startup was really not an easy decision to make because they had the lowest paying offer, the smallest team, the smallest budget, and also the lowest amount of employees. I think they had about 100 at the time, which to me just overall meant a lot of lagging indicators that they weren't gonna be the right choice long term. However, the brief conversations I had with the hiring manager and also the director of data science ultimately convinced me to pick the startup just because I knew I was gonna get a lot of freedom and flexibility when it came to my role. I was able to wear multiple hats and also learn from multiple people. The mentors I was gonna get came from very unique backgrounds and diverse backgrounds, having a lot of unique things to bring to the table. So I just didn't wanna pass on that learning opportunity. And also at the time, my wife got a pretty good uh, chemical engineering internship offer. So the financial aspect wasn't really too crazy for us. It wasn't too risky, but we were willing to gamble on the startup startup for my long-term growth and the potential to learn a lot and grow a lot within that spin. So fast forward to May, within the first two weeks of starting my internship, all I really wanted to do was learn about the company, understand the business model, and try to figure out where my skill set fits into the equation. I tried my very best to be a sponge and absorb as much information as I could from my mentors, from stakeholders, and stuff like that. And within the first three or four weeks, I was able to take on a full-time workload, handling tickets, making dashboards, creating reports, and stuff like that. I also identified a major problem within the company that everyone was talking about, which was churn. So my capstone project was designed to try and solve that problem. 
I basically worked on building a churn prediction model to forecast and predict churn, and it got a lot of traction from different stakeholders, which I think ultimately paved the way for a full-time offer. At this time, I think I had a very unique and probably unfair advantage because both my mentors were at the company from the start from its birth, and they also had a very diverse and unique background. One came from a sales background to a data analyst position, and the other one was a business analyst for our CEO, and then eventually became a data engineer for the entire company. With their help, I was really able to understand the key components to our business model and some of the problems that we were facing that really needed to be addressed. And through their endorsement and some of my work, I ended up getting a full-time offer. So that brings us to the end of June, early July, 2023. I was about to start my final semester at school and considering accepting this full-time data analyst position. One of the former companies that I spoke to, interviewed and got an offer with emailed asking if I'd be interested in becoming a business intelligence intern at their company for the fall of 2023. The caveat here is that they also hinted that there's a possibility of me being retained as a full-time employee after I graduate with a bachelor's in data science. This company was a lot bigger, which also meant the pay was a lot higher. But after some discussions with my mentors and managers, I decided to stick with the startup. My rationale here was I gained so much experience in just two months of working in that company, and they also trusted me with a full-time role while I was still in school, so why not just stick it out? And I knew there was a lot more I could learn from my mentors there. I just thought the potential to grow was just too good to pass on, and I knew based on past experience, I just wouldn't be a fly on the wall. I had a voice within this company. I knew the projects I'd be working on would be meaningful, and also have the freedom and flexibility to take on more responsibility, uh, work on R&D stuff, and add more responsibility to my plate if needed. Now, although my official title at the time was a data analyst, I was working a lot with machine learning, A-B testing, causal analysis, and also some analytics engineering work. I did make a couple of reports and build a few dashboards when the demand was high, but my focus was mainly on R&D work based on historical data and the needs that we had. At that point, my managers and I decided to make a roadmap on how I could pivot into a more data science focused role. Part of that roadmap was skills that I already possessed like R, SQL, Python, uh, basic statistical knowledge, experience with traditional ML models, but there are also skills that I did not possess like experience with model deployment, ML ops, and stuff like that. So I spent the next quarter applying my skills with these new tools and technologies, and by the end of the quarter, I deployed my first model to production. And because of all that, during my annual review, I was given a promotion and a raise. However, during this time, I was also testing the market to see if I had any other options. I interviewed at a few companies, some that I had a personal relationship with based on previous interviews, and others that were just cold. And after a few weeks, I ended up getting two offers to become a data scientist one and a data scientist two at two different companies. And those two offers not only helped with my self-confidence, they also helped with the compensation discussions I had at my current company. So yeah, that's the story of how I became a data scientist. I know it's not really the traditional route where you have to get a master's or a PhD or have some fellowship experience, but it worked for me personally. From one perspective, I think I was just really fortunate with my timing and my decisions. From another perspective, I had to put in hours and hours of consistent work on top of my daily responsibilities, face over 300 rejections, and have faith in myself and my mentors that I will get to where I need to be. Today as it stands, I work on various different ML projects as a data scientist. I also manage and monitor our data engineering tool stack, uh, which includes our ETL process and stuff like that. And more recently, I started mentoring a lot of new people who just joined our team. I document some of this on this channel, so if you're interested, do check out some of our previous videos. If you're curious about the specific roadmap that I use to get to where I am today, do let me know down in the comment section below. I can consider making a video on that topic separately. For those of you who are looking to land an internship or even a job, do consider subscribing because the next few videos are going to be about resume review tips, uh, tools that I personally use to land more interviews, and also interview tips altogether. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do leave a like down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.